Welcome to Let the Quran Speak. I'm Aisha, your host. The recent discovery of a Quran parchment at the University of Birmingham made waves across international media. The parchment dates back to at least the time of the third caliph of Islam and is almost identical to the Quran in circulation today. Many Muslims are celebrating this discovery as confirmation of what they already believed, that the Quran we have today is exactly the same as the original. Does the discovery support that view? What can we learn from this newly discovered parchment? Joining me to discuss this is Dr. Shabir Ali. Welcome to the show, Dr. Shabir. Pleasure to be on as usual. So there's a lot of hype going around right now about this Quran manuscript that's been found in Mark Birmingham, and there are reports that are saying it's dating as far back as to the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Is this really true? Well, so, so the carbon dating uh, would suggest, that the, the, according to the carbon dating results, uh, with a 95% accuracy, this uh, goes back to the period of time between 568 to 645 uh, of our common era. Now, carbon dating, uh, by its very nature, gives uh, imprecise uh, results. So, so it's a, a statistical result. It says that with a 95% accuracy, this is the range of values anywhere within this period. Now, the, the last date that is mentioned, the, the later uh, end of that range is uh, 645. This is uh, one year after Uthman's uh, caliphate began. And uh, the significance of this uh, dating uh, is in the, the fact that it overlaps with that early period. It appeared at the time, at the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, the early caliphs, and now into the, the caliphate of uh, Uthman, radiallahu anh. So how, how true is it that they're exactly the same? Because the reason I'm asking this is because I remember growing up, we used to pay broken telephone, and by the time it got to me, the message would be completely different, and a lot of articles are saying it's, it's almost exactly the same. Yes, and this is why it is uh, of such great significance. First of all, it's exciting for Muslims, and second, uh, it's uh, of great interest to academics. Uh, because uh, rather than the results of a broken telephone, uh, we are seeing here an accurate transmission of the text in that uh, what has been discovered there in Birmingham is uh, a manuscript, uh, only four uh, pages to be sure, uh, but nonetheless pages that correspond uh, to the Quran as we're reading it now as far as the consonantal uh, text is is, uh, is concerned. I have to explain that, what is meant, what is the difference here. Uh, but uh, the, the significant difference uh, that has been found is that uh, whereas in our present uh, copies, uh, some of the alifs would be written in to make the word more easily pronounceable, uh, they and are And alif, sorry, alif is a letter in uh, the Quran? Alif is the first letter of the Arabic alphabet, and this is uh, often used to indicate a long vowel. So if we look at the Arabic word as samawat, for example, which means the heavens, uh, now you, you hear the stretching of the A vowel, samawat. Now in, in this early manuscript, the, the stretched A vowel is not written in. It was expected that uh, the early readers of the Quran would know from having learned from their teachers where the vowel is long, where it is short. Almost like in English we may say bat and ball, but bat has a short A, ball a, a long A. Uh, and, and we know the difference just because we know the language, not because there's any marker that indicates that this one is short and that one is long. So in the uh, early writings of the Quran, uh, we often find that the long A vowel is not marked. Uh, but in our, present, uh, man in our present copies, they are marked to make it easy for people, uh, Arabs and non-Arabs alike, those who know the language, those who do not, to be able to pronounce it with, with greater accuracy and uh, correctness. So uh, one might say this is not really a significant difference at all. And uh, the fact that the rest of the text, the consonantal ductus, remains uh, or is the same as what we're reading now, uh, this uh, is remarkable from the academic perspective. And so then that means that the overall message over time has remained the same, but the changing in the letters just leads to the different types of readings that we now know uh, of the Quran, right? Yes, and this necessitates uh, my, my explanation of the difference when I say the consonantal ductus. Now, I said that uh, the A vowels, the long A vowels, were not uh, necessarily marked. Some were marked, some were not. Uh, but, but more than this, the early writing of the Arabic text of the Quran did not include markers that will differentiate between some look-alike letters. Um, so you might find, for example, that one simple shape is, is representative of two or three letters of the Arabic alphabet. What, what, what differentiates 
uh, one letter from the other, are some dots that are placed, either uh, one, two, or three dots, either above or below that special marker. In, in this text that has been discovered at Birmingham, only uh, some of the letters have been differentiated uh, in this way. And uh, it seems that these, are, are, these have been differentiated purposefully uh, by uh, the, 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 the scribes who uh, wanted to mark off and differentiate those uh, places in the text where a later reader might easily trip up and, and recite the wrong letter if they did not see these differentiating markers. So some markers are there, but not all of them. So how does this factor in historically? Because uh, the Quran was an oral tradition which was passed down. So at what point was it actually uh, documented in writing? Now, in the Islamic tradition, it is mentioned that uh, in the, during the time of the Caliph Uthman, copies were made and sent to ma major parts of the Muslim empire, uh, together with the uh, edict that uh, all competing copies should be burned. Uh, the reason for that from a traditional perspective would be that uh, whereas now we have an official uh, copy being sent out uh, under the aegis of the ruling uh, Caliph, uh, done by a committee of people who had uh, listened to the Quran directly from the Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, or are uh, otherwise skilled in the Arabic language, so they know how to write correctly, they know how to spell the words exactly. Uh, so when it is done by a committee uh, under a supervised uh, structure and with the input of uh, many of the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, is done in a very public way with an open call for anyone who has any information about the Quran to come forward with it. Now, that obviously would be more reliable than any copy that has been made by any individual, no matter how good or how pious that individual may be. The collective work is obviously going to trump that. Uh, so rather than have uh, uh, copies in circulation which may actually contain errors because if it's written by one person, that person may have actually uh, made an error in copying. We know this. It's not only broken telephone by word of mouth, but even if you're copying a text that is there before you, you can make mistakes in, in copying it because uh, the eyes grow tired, the hand grows weary, uh, you know, mind wanders, and, and sometimes people write a line twice. Sometimes they miss a line uh, and so on. Uh, so the, to avoid the possibility of erroneous copies being in circulation, the uh, caliph issued the edict that other copies should be burnt, and uh, only copies now uh, made from, from this new, uh, the supervised production, uh, should, should be in circulation. And we also know in, um, in the Muslim community, there's also a tradition of memorizing the Holy Quran as well, right? Yes, uh, this tradition of memorizing the Quran survives to this day, and we can find uh, thousands uh, of uh, memorizers in a small city such as the city of Toronto. And uh, they often uh, demonstrate their skill, not for the purpose of demonstration, but, but for the purpose of worship during the month of Ramadan, when in many of the major mosques, uh, they can be heard reciting the entire Quran from memory, a portion uh, per night until uh, during the, the end, uh, the, the uh, month of Ramadan, the entire Quran is recited from memory. This is a very fascinating discussion. Thank you, Dr. Shabir. You're welcome.